So the Women's Health Initiative Study, using Premarin and Provera um, in women age 50 to 79, okay, this is what they found. 10,000 women per year on Premarin and Provera. There were seven more cases of heart disease, eight more cases of breast cancer, eight more strokes, and 18 more cases of blood clots. After two years, they stopped the arm of the study that had both the Premarin and the Provera. They continued the arm of the study that had the Premarin only because these risks were lower. North American Menopause Society and the International Menopause Society um, comes out with this statement. They review every year all of this, the research that's going on ar about hormones. And their conclusion is that recent data support the initiation of hormone therapy around the time of menopause. So where's the discrepancy here? So basically, what they did is they, they stratified. So instead of women from 50 to 79, they took the women from 50 to 59, and there was actually a decreased risk of heart attacks. There were three additional strokes per year within five years of menopause, which is not statistically significant. There were seven, so we, we're talking about 18 blood clots age 50 to 79. It went down to seven with the estrogen and the, uh, the, the, uh, we the estrogen, estrogen and the Provera therapy and actually dropped even further when you took away the Provera, okay? In diabetes, there was a re re reduced risk. There was no increase in uh, risk of breast cancer with the estrogen only arm of the study. There was a decrease, 40% decreased risk of colon cancer and the endometrial ovarian lung cancer were not significant. So the conclusion, again, by the North American Menopause Society and the International uh, Menopause Society is that the, the Women's Health Initiative and other observational studies indicate hormone therapy may reduce total mortality when initiated soon after menopause. So what are the choices with treatment? Um, what I use, uh, what I recommend to patients is to use transdermal if they're going, if they choose to do hormone replacement is to use transdermal um, estrogen, progesterone, uh, testosterone. Now estrogen in particular because if when you take oral estrogen then there's, it, it goes through, it's metabolized through the liver and um, there's always uh, breakdown products of when you go when it goes through the liver and they can increase the inflammatory markers. Progesterone on the other hand can be transdermal but it can also be oral micronized progesterone and that's that's perfectly that's perfectly fine there's no metabolites that occur with with the oral progesterone. Other so testosterone is usually if given to women is a transdermal method um, and I'll talk about the uh, replacement for men. Um, and orally supporting hormones, again, thyroid, DHEA is a precursor to the hormones. Um, I'll show you uh, where DHEA fits in a little bit later. Pregnenolone is another possible uh, supportive measure, uh, supplement for hormones. Cortev, sometimes we use that for adrenal fatigue. So heard of bioidentical hormones. So what are they? They are closest to the natural hormones that the body makes. So estradiol, estriol, and estrone are the body's natural hormones, right? Estradiol is the stronger hormone. Estriol is a weaker hormone. And estrone is a byproduct of what estradiol is broken down to. So premarin from pregnant married urine is not bioidentical. Um, now they have in the pharmacy, they have estradiol, estradiol <coughs> patches, estradiol gels, so this is still considered bioidentical, even though write a prescription, you go to the pharmacy, you can get that. Um, but we can also compound, and the advantage of compounding is that we can actually use estriol, which is a weaker hormone. There's some evidence, there's scientific research that shows that estriol binds to the estrogen receptors in the breast and may decrease the risk of breast cancer when you combine it with estradiol. So this is a choice a woman makes to, if they're gonna choose to do hormones, is maybe to add estriol to the mix and do it a compound. 
Okay, so a testosterone can be added to a compound, progesterone can be added to a compound, and then there's some herbs that can also help with uh, menopausal symptoms, as can acupuncture. So what are the testosterone treatment options? Uh, there are shots that can be given weekly or every other week. The advantage, there's advantages and disadvantages. The disadvantage is that there's a peak and there's a trough in injections of, of testosterone. Um, the advantage is that you know you're getting it right into the body. Some, some men don't absorb the gels or patches. Um, so there are gels, there are patches. There's actually a newer one, which is an underarm lotion, so they don't get it on their hands. Um, and there's also pellets can be placed under the skin every three months. Then you don't have to worry about it. It's not, it's not something that needs any stitching. It's just put right under the skin. Um, oral testosterone has not been very effective, but um, I've heard in Europe there's a form of oral testosterone that may be effective, and so stay tuned. Um, so what does testosterone do? It dilates the coronary arteries, it lowers the blood pressure, it decreases inflammation, it increases bone and muscle mass, it decreases insulin resistance. Now, the Journal of National Cancer Institute determined, did studies, and there was no relation between testosterone levels and prostate cancer. So no fear there, although we do check when we're doing a testosterone replacement, we do follow the PSA, the prostate-specific antigen. 